Infinity Countdown Prime, issue number one. Who's going to get all six stones first? Hey comic book fans, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0 and fans, you're back with me, Mike Spider Slayer. Getting ready to do that all-important comic book review so you, the fans, can make a decision on what comic books to buy. And today, guys, we're talking about Infinity Countdown Prime, issue number one. Yes, it's here. Are you ready for it? I guess I am. We'll see how this issue turns out, or this series turns out, right? Um... Cover is pretty cool. Love the cover. You get to see, you know, all the different hands holding a different stone. But who will be in possession of all the stones when this is all said and done with, right? I guess we'll find out slowly but surely. This book is written by uh, uh, Jerry Duggan, and the artwork is done by Mike Dodato Jr. The artwork is really well done in this book. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, here we get to see an opening pages with Wolverine. Uh, we get to see how uh, the letter draws the letters and then Wolverine's inside it, which is really nice as well. The colors pop. Um, Wolverine holds the space stone in this issue. So when he uses its power, we get to see the power being displayed on the page is really well done. And I think that is quite awesome the action scenes are awesome in here as well um just just a really good looking book overall um i thought it was awesome check out this two page spread with all the captain marvels in it uh so really really nice looking book overall let's talk about this story all right so the book opens up right away as it wants to knowledge its readers in case you're not f familiar with the infinity gems or stones and it's even mentioned in the book that they're also called the infinity gems and uh, so that is not forgotten here um, but the book opens up with infinity stones and it shows you all the stones how they intertwine with each other and uh, how together you can basically control the universe okay so i thought that was really informative for the readers you know jumping on this so the book opens up with wolverine as he's sitting in the forest and then all of a sudden he winds up getting attacked by these ultron robots and they're after the space gem or space stone or whatever you want to call it and uh he makes short work of them you know he gets to bamf all over the place as you say and uh he's really learned to master this uh, stone and I thought that was really awesome the next thing we see is that Loki winds up coming on board here and he's like you know you're not quite fit to hold this stone so why don't you give it to somebody you know more qualified to uh, you know hold on to it and he's like what's that supposed to mean bub you know and it was funny and there's this really one good page where um, Loki jacks Wolverine in the face and uh, Wolverine does the same thing back and they're just like, hey, we're just making sure we're each other and we're not clones and, and things like that. And the artwork page in there was actually really beautiful. So the interactions between these two characters uh, were absolutely awesome. And as the story progresses, we get to see each individual uh, that has a stone and we get to see a little bit. Um, whether it's Captain Marvel and which stone she has, um, which she has the reality stone. Um, we get to see how the Nova and Nova Corps and the Guardians of the Galaxy, um, how they have the power stone and how it's changed, how it's this big, huge thing now, not just this little, little it's a beats of stone where other people are coming after it. And we also get to see a Super Scroll in here who actually has a uh, stone as well. And I think his is the... Um, this is the green one, which is the time stone, uh, which I thought was cool. And he's just like, yeah, I only have the five more to get. Like, it's an easy task, you know. And then we wind up getting to see where this connected to the Adam Warlock special, which I thought was really cool, too. Um, we wind up seeing him go into present time so because so he's looking for a stone as well. And uh, we get to see all this narration uh, done by... Uh, the Contemplar, as he's ahead, and we get to see uh, Magnus, who is Warlock's twin brother, like evil twin brother or whatnot. And just as he's shooting all the shit and saying how he's going to take over the world and blah, 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 and he's got like 
the soul jam. And he's going to find all the other gems. The next thing you wind up seeing is uh, Pimtron winds up coming out. And he freaking thrusts his freaking his fist through his guy's chest. And he's like dead. And it's like he's all gone. And the Contemplar is like, there's still hope for you, Pink Pim. And he's like, no. He's like, I can change the universe. And he just sits there and he melts the Contemplar's head you know, into pieces and whatnot. And it's just like, and then you find out that you have the real, I guess the real Hank Pym's inside the soul gym with Gamora's part of her soul. And her soul is really old and it's stuck in there. And those two meet with each other inside the soul gym. It's really weird by the time you get to the end of this issue. So I thought it was really good. And then when you get to the back half of this book, what made this book thicker than what it was, it wasn't all story. But it was all informative to get you again caught up of what was the history behind the Infinity Stones or Gems. And it tells you what each stone can actually do. Um, it shows you how they were created. Um, how Thanos got all the stones. How they were separated. How he actually got the gauntlet. How Adam Warlock wound up getting the gauntlet after the fact. How the gems were split apart again. How there was... Um, the Illuminati who had control and possession of the gems and how the Red Hood got possession of the gems. So it just keeps on going and going and going. And uh, But it does a nice job. In case you have not read all those stories, at least it catches you up and it gets you interested uh, for the story of what's ahead. So I thought this was good. It was a nice little setup issue to get you excited uh, for things to come uh, in the next issue. And I think the next one we actually have is going to be, let me find it for you. Um, infinity, infinity countdown issue. Number one, this was prime again, just to set things up to set the stage on who has what stones. Now what everyone does with them, how they fight for them. That's still yet to be determined. So I really like this. This was really cool to see who has all the stones. I love seeing all the different personalities in here. We got a death in here, which was really cool. And uh, so at the end of the day, I got to give this one a four and a half out of five stars. I thought it was a lot of fun. A good read and very informative for readers that have never read this before. So guys, in the comments below, tell me what you thought of Infinity Countdown Prime, issue number one. Were you a fan? Were you not a fan? Uh, are you looking forward to this event? I have to say this is an event because I think it is. And fans, as always, thank you so much for watching this channel. It doesn't work without your fan support. So if you like this, please give a like, subscribe to the channel. And guys, until that next comic book review, this is Mike Spider Slayer signing off. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Bye.